So our next presenter, a colleague and friend, Dr. Shai Lang, is a professor of medical physics, current section head of our CT physics group, and director of the medical physics residency program in the Department of Radiology. He is also a fellow of the APM. Dr. Lang investigates imaging techniques and clinical applications of CT with his recent work focusing on photon counting detector CT. Dr. Lang has been actively involved in professional societies such as the AAPM, the RSNA, DICOM, the Society of Cardiovascular CT, and the International Electrotechnical Commission. He has published over 230 peer reviewed journal articles and has 20 issued patents. He is current uh, head of the CT physics section, and I welcome him to the stage. Thank you very much, Cynthia, for the uh, very kind introduction. And uh, also thank you for putting this together. Uh, it's amazing sitting here today and listening from the pioneers of CT and uh, listening to the uh, great history of CT, what we have seen through this half century. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about photon counting detector. Um, I think this is covered in some of the early talks this morning. Like most of the CT detector we have been using is the uh, working so-called energy integrating scintillating detectors. Uh, the way it works is we have X-ray comes in, interact with the scintillating material and generate the visible light and then detected by the photodiode detector, uh, photodiode and convert it into electrical signals. Um, the signal we uh, detected here is proportional to the sum of all the photon energies together. So that's where the energy integrating detector name coming from. Uh, basically, we say, okay, all the photons, no matter what energy you have, let's put everything together into one bucket. That's how it works. Uh, in addition to that, uh, there's a sample in between the program, the light traveling. I think that we saw a great picture this morning about the, like the streamline putting those uh, together onto the detectors. Photon counting detector uh, working a little bit different. Uh, most of the time in the CT, we're talking about the photon counting detector with semiconductors. So it's a direct conversion technique with the X-ray interact with a semiconductor, generate the electron hole pairs. Then you have a uh, bias voltage, and then with the bias voltage, the electron hole will travel and induce some electrical signal there. The most important part is the signal we uh, have in the photon counting detector is proportional to energy of individual photons. So this time we count individual photons instead of putting them all together into one bucket. And then imagine that we have a train of radiation event with a lot of photons coming in. Uh, the way the detector works is allow the user uh, to select the energy stress hold. Let's say we put 20 keV there so that we can exclude a lot of those noises be in below, right? Those are noise, they do not signal. But leave all the signals there we can detect. So we count how many photons above this threshold. That give us one set of data. Then we can change to a different uh, threshold. We can use a different threshold simultaneously. That give us a, a count of the photons over that energy. So that essentially give us another data set. And we can also count how many photons in between, right? So intrinsically with photon counting, we count the individual photons, we put them into multi bins according to the energy, intrinsically give us the multi-energy information. So that's the uh, photon counting and uh, photon counting detector, how it works. Um, photon counting detector itself being used in nuclear medicine, uh, but it's a different story in CT. It's very, very more challenging in CT, mainly because of the high flux. Uh, we talk about several others higher than nuke. Um, fortunately, with recent, particular last 15 years, we see tremendous advance in semiconductor materials. And we see the electronics getting better and better. So we're starting seeing lab systems, preclinical scanners that are built it uh, and the built in to investigate like the benefit of perform phantom animal study and in some cases patient studies, right? So at Mayo, you know, we said we have very first CT scanner in the United States. Uh, we also a uh, early investigators into the photon counting detector technology. So I was very, very fortunate uh, to uh, uh, being able to start working on this very soon after I joined the Mayo Clinic. 
so we started working with something related to noise reduction, the spectroscopy, multi-energy, and uh, uh, in addition to the simulations we did, we also uh, worked with uh, Dr. Ritman, who is in the audience here today, uh, on a macro city system, uh, uh, Dr. Ritman and Dr. Moala uh, getting together. And these are some of the early images we took, you know, uh, as you can see here, the different columns actually cause responding to different energy beings. So we started to see the energy information from you know, very early uh, photon counting detector chips. Uh, although the images are filled with the uh, ring artifacts, but still that demonstrate the point. But that's also speak how important it is to get, re get rid of the ring artifacts in photon counting detector. And then we keep working on this and really a big, big milestone for our group is the, in 2014, we brought in the first prototype for the county city scanner in collaboration with uh, Siemens. And uh, uh, as you can see, some of the picture, we bring in the major equipment uh, because it's a big deal to put into the Opus building. And we also bring in a whole bunch of people helping us and some of them sitting in the back of the room. Uh, so we put in this together. This is the first whole body photon counting detector CT that is capable of performing in vivo patient exam using the radiation dose and dose rate like you normally would do with a CT scanner. So the scanner installed in 2014 and then we have a ribbon cutting ceremony. So it's so Dr. Ridman, uh, actually Dr. McCullough and uh, Dr. Flo, they are here in the audience. And uh, then we, uh, we're busy testing this system, make sure it's functional. Uh, so about one month, we get operational, and uh, this is our uh, happy group who's sitting in the control room and uh, look at some of the images we got from this system. Uh, so this system in uh, August of 2015, we actually been able to perform the very first patient uh, uh, exam. It's not just a patient, first patient here. I think it's also the first patient in the world with this, like again, the clinical dose levels we can scan. This is 31 year old male patient, non contrast CT scan. And uh, uh, part of the history, our group love kidney stones and actually Dr. Batiska is a big uh, provider for our stones. Uh, <laughs> We look at uh, the uh, thing, we look at actually these are the uh, EID scanner, these are PCD scanner. We try to demonstrate the photon count and give us multi energy information. So not only we can detect the small stone better, but we can also characterize the composition of kidney stone. So that's our first patient then. And since then, the scanner been here for uh, about six years. This actually a slide I made back in 2020. So this slide I made three years ago. Back then, uh, it's close to the end of this scanner. And I will try to see how much we accomplished with this prototype CD scanner. And even today, I look back, I found actually a lot of benefits we see in Fulton County Detector City today. We actually demonstrated that in this prototype CT scanner. So very great success for six years, very productive collaboration uh, with Siemens on this system. Uh, but it's a prototype system among, uh, I mean, there's drawbacks and as it meant to be, right? Mm -hmm. One of the major thing is, uh, we don't have real-time reconstruction there. So anything we scan, you have to offload the raw data into a, another computer and run some offline reconstruction. You wait a few hours until you see image. So when you scan, you actually don't see what you see there, right? That's obviously a drawback. Uh, so that's why when 2020 July, when we had our second uh, ProPassM system uh, picture here, it's a single source full field bill for the county detector CT, among all the improvements, what standing out is I got real time images. Look at the picture, how excited our operators are. So Nikki, not sure whether it's audience and also Liz, we were super excited. We saw what we scanned right away. Uh, so that scanner, we scanned over 200 patients on that. And then fast moving forward, April, 2021, we got our first dual source photon counting detector CT. And this uh, later became the near term alpha we all know today. But back then, it's not called alpha. It was not FDA cleared. So we scanned a patient and the RB for about half uh, half year. 
And this is a picture of the ribbon carting with together with our very first patients. We perform a coronary CTA on our very first patient using this scanner. Then as I mentioned, half a year later, September 30th, uh, we saw the news that FDA cleared first major imaging device advancement for computer tomography in nearly a decade. So that's a big news. And also, uh, Cynthia actually pointed out the date. They say, look at the date, it's September 30th. That's like October 1st, um, 50 years ago. That was the very first CT patient scan. So, that's a great, I don't know if it's a coincidence or on purpose, whatever it is, that's exciting. And this obviously quickly picked up by many media outlets. Um, and we had our first uh, technical evaluation paper, so Kishore uh, led the effort and we published that on the radiology. And uh, uh, then meanwhile, almost simultaneously, we see a lot of news also reporting Philips, Canon, GE, uh, multiple vendors, um, uh, release the news that they are working on for the county detector CT. They build prototype system that can perform in vivo patient imaging, looking at the evaluation. Later, we also saw neurological has a, a dedicated head CT with photon counting. So uh, the society, I think, is in the other vendors are moving it towards this direction. So uh, look at how excited this photon counting detector CT is. And if you went to RSC last year, saw the photon counting everywhere, right? The education session, the scientific session, the news. So photon counting is definitely a buzzword. So uh, this is a slide actually I made a while, about one month ago uh, when I gave a talk at ARRS. I'll try to look at how many papers published in the last few years uh, in, on the topic of photon counting detector CT. These are the papers. And uh, I want to point out a couple points like this, you see some jump, this about 2015-ish, and this another jump of the about 2022. And this is coincident with the timeline that when we had the first, sorry, the first prototype system, and this was the first commercial system. And the 2023 already, uh, it's, this is back in May, right? Beginning of the May, we already see a lot of publications. So I expect this number will be much higher once we move towards the end of the year. So why we're we so excited about photon counting detector because there are so many benefits uh, we can get out from this system. And there's his list that we put together in one of our review article. Uh, again, if you look at the time, actually a lot of this, we were based on the first prototype system. Uh, we try to demonstrate this benefit. The first thing we saw is the reduced electronic noise. Uh, basically, by setting up the threshold above the electronic noise level, we can essentially substantially reduce or eliminate the electron noise. That's super beneficial when we look at low-dose scans or large patients. Like this is example is from my colleague, JG, and the same patient, EID and the PCD, at the shoulder, you have a lot of streak artifacts with a low number of photon counts. With the photon counting can improve the visualization of bronchial plexus. And this is a benefit that we sell there. Another thing quickly pan out is the increased contrast noise ratio with the photon weighting. Conventional energy uh, integrating detectors give more weighting to the high energy photons. But unfortunately, if we look at the attenuation property of the X-ray, the high energy photons didn't give us good contrast. On the other hand, the low, low energy photons would give us more contrast, but they were weighted lower. So this is intrinsically inefficient weighting scheme. Uh, photon counting give equal weighting for every photon, independent of what energy it is. So compared to EID, this is a more dose efficient weighting mechanism. And we did phantom studies, but uh, more importantly, you can see on the patient scan, the same patient yet in the PCD, you will notice the enhanced the contrast of the GI tract using the uh, photon counting detector CT. Another thing is since we have the flexibility to select the energy threshold, and then we can use multiple energy threshold, we have multiple data set. So for example, we can selectively using the high energy threshold data, and this will help us reduce beam hardening artifacts, reduce some of the metal artifacts, as you can see here. 
In addition to that, in this study, we also add some team filter on top of the photon counting detector. So a combination of the technology actually give us improved visualization of the spine uh, CT images by reducing the artifact caused by the spine hardware. And this being confirmed by the radar studies uh, with three experienced radiologists. Um, then spatial resolution, we actually heard, I think Norbert mentioned earlier this morning about the resolution of radiography and CT was uh, uh, talking about and think this actually reaching close to uh, that level as the uh, wanted you know, before. So in CT to go into the high resolution, we need to make the detector smaller. The conventional technique uh, uh, has the septas there. So as the detector making smaller and smaller, the septa actually taking uh, in a larger fraction of the whole area space. And those space are dead space. So that loses the dose efficiency. With the photon counting use direct conversion technique. There are no visible light, there are no septa. We can keep a high, uh, fitting factors in these scenarios. So this gives us a dose efficient ultra high resolution imaging mode. And this actually turns out to be a great success in photon counting in multiple clinical areas. So what can the high resolution help us? First of all, it can help us see things better. So these are things we probably can see today, but with photon counting high resolution, we can see them better. This is uh, particularly like in lung imaging, for example, in terms of nodule characterization, in terms of looking at the order, especially the higher order of the bronchi, uh, we can see them better. In addition to that, the high resolution also gave us better information about the textures. This is particularly important in interstitial lung disease, where the texture matters a lot make up the diagnosis. Like this is the work by uh, my colleague, Dr. Balect, and, uh, uh, they did some study on the uh, interstitial lung disease. This is a, a clinical case where you see the traction bronchiectus, right? The PCD actually reviewed better resolution of the um, of her reticulation and more clear the traction bronchiectus compared to that with the EID. Again, this is because of the texture, but the texture coming from the high resolution. So that's what the uh, high resolution PCD can help us. Uh, this is a slide made actually by my colleague, Dr. Dean. So he actually looked at the uh, cerebral arteries and look at it from the bigger ones to the smaller ones. So I'm going to show some of those. So first, when we look at the A1 segment, and uh, this is EID image, and when I click this PCD image. So we can see on the EID images, but we see better, much better on the PCD. And then we go smaller. So this is anterior communicating artery. Uh, as you can see, the size there is getting smaller. And again, the PCD show a small continuous boundary, clear delineation compared to the fuzzy boundaries. But then when we keep moving, uh, now we look at the arteries, uh, it's uh, just a little bit over one millimeter. It become questionable whether we can see it or not. I, I have a little bit hard time. Maybe uh, the radiologists can see that, but look at the uh, photon counting high resolution, much better images. Then we go to the very small, this is time we talk about sub-millimeter arteries. And this is probably the smallest important intracranial arteries we need. And this arrow is supposed to point into something, but I cannot see nothing there. Turn on the photon counting high resolution. I think I can see it. I think everybody in the room can see this. So. This not only help us see things we can see today better, it's starting to help us see things we don't see today. And that's also the story we try to tell uh, this, this work by Dr. Campbell and Dr. Farnsworth. They actually look at the orbit arteries and they actually now look at the CT images and look at the anatomy book and they try to map them together to build an atlas. Uh, again, the EID, EID CT scanner, you don't see them daily. You, you simply don't see them, you ignore them, but now you can see them. And now we're starting to see what should we do with these images. Similarly for coronary calcification, this is the work by uh, one of our fellow, uh, Shao Jie in the audience. So we try to detect coronary calcification, which is a strong predictor of cardiac event. 
On the EID images, sometimes we don't see calcification, but in some of those cases, it's not the calcium is there. It's just not, we don't have enough resolution to see them. With photon counting, we expect we see more of the small calcifications. Then the, the high resolution can help also help us working in challenging situations, right? So in clinical scenario, patient coming with all different conditions, some of them relatively easy, some of them are more challenging. Like the patient with coronary stand, the stand will generate booming artifact that impact evaluation of the lumen. Uh, so for example, here, if this is Emily's work, if you look at the EID image, look at EID image, the strong, uh, blooming artifact make it very hard to see whether there's something wrong with the lumen. But with the photon counting, we can see the lumen very well, so we can evaluate co uh, confidently. This is clinical case, the same patient, EID, you see how much blooming artifacts, you know, is there anything happening here? That's really hard to say. But with the photon counting, we can see the lumen more open and give us more confidence to assess this. Um, similarly, in the, uh, in the neural CTA exams, so this patient uh, has an MSC stent, and the EID images we always saw here is big, bright blob. And in the photon counting high resolution, we actually can see inside the stent, and this is a clear case with a uh, in-stent thrombosis. So this actually changed the diagnosis potentially for this patient. The high resolution not only help us to improve the qualitative visualization, but also improve the accuracy of quantification. Like this is the case we try to look at the calcium, and then also we try to look at the lumen when the patient have dense calcification. And these are some quantitative numbers we compare to the reference standard, and we can demonstrate the improved quantification using photon counting compared to the energy integrating detector. And uh, this is a recent work Emily did for the uh, patients. We have a group of 23 patients with dense calcification on the coronaries, coronary arteries. And we look at their uh, stenosis, degree of stenosis based on the cataract scores. So the important part is if we look at the histogram distribution, the, these are all the same patients scan EID, PCAD. If we look at the blue bar here, we see a distribution more towards the high degree stenosis. But if we look at the PCD here, it's shifted toward the lower end. So if we purely based on the EID, we probably overcall the stenosis quite a lot. And then remember that the downward patient management is depending on the degree of stenosis the patient has. So this diagnosis tool can potentially change the patient management for uh, patients with coronary artery disease. What about radiation dose reduction? I think Dr. Yu mentioned that some of this, uh, but photon count has a high potential reduced radiation dose. And they're coming from multiple factors. The reduction of electronic noise, the more efficient photon weighting we already talked about, and also the high resolution sampling really allows stronger filters during the reconstruction. So this is just one clinical sample image. The patient scan, same radiation dose, but if we look at image quality, we see a substantial 47% lower image noise at match the resolution. So there's a lot of potential to further reduce radiation dose if we want to keep the same image quality. And this is another case for the temporal bone, which is more high contrast task. Uh, for the EID, uh, 53 milligree, PCD 36 milligree. And you, if we look at the steep uh, piston prosthesis, you see how broken it is on the EID and on the PCD it's venture continuous. This is teeny tiny structure that we can evaluate accurately and with the radiation, lower radiation dose. So as my colleagues put together in the title of one of the paper we wrote, this is seeing more with less using the photon counting detector. And similarly in the pediatric case, I think Dr. Yu showed this, uh, he and Dr. Host working on this to using very low dose CT scan with photon counting that down to the level of a chest X-ray, but with much more information. So again, try to see more with less. Um, a major benefit that we think the photon county brings into the table is the simultaneous high resolution and multi-energy capability. So basically the system gives us the benefits of both worlds simultaneously. 
we don't have to choose any longer. We don't have the dilemma, do I send the patient to high resolution? Do I send the patient to multi-energy? They both stare in the same scan. So this can be used in multiple clinic areas. For example, uh, this is Liz's work. If we look at the high resolution coronary CTA, we can look at the stent, we can look at the dense calcification, the high resolution help us look at the lumen. Then we can use the multi-energy to do some material decomposition. For example, we can remove the calcium, uh, like we can see the lumen, or actually the opposite, we remove the lumen either and only leave the calcium there to quantification. We can also use the ida map to look at the myocardium for myocardium infarct. All this can be done in the same exam. Um, with the dual source, there's also this mode to help simultaneous uh, flash mode or high page mode that you can, in addition to all this benefit, you also have a super fast scanning speed and the um, lower radiation dose. So some applications like coronary artery disease or PE disease that we can use this benefit. In the MSK world, we need a high resolution to look at the fine structure of the bone and also the fine fractures. Uh, but on top of that, we can use the multi-energy to look at the bone edema. So again, that's the benefit of having both together. With the capability to select the energy threshold, if we set up the energy threshold right around the K edge of the tar certain target material, uh, Fulton County can do K edge imaging. And there have been multiple investigations, uh, create a lot of excitement in this world because potentially see if we can do target imaging, molecular imaging, or do multi-contrast imaging simultaneously. So there's a whole bunch, a lot of potential there. But these are still in more in the early days of animal studies. And uh, so hopefully we'll see this more movement and progress more towards the patient applications. With the photon county detector, amazing hardware, uh, we also want to develop some software to make sure we extract the most information out from the scanner. Particularly, we want to control the image noise as the high resolution or multiple material decomposition all enhanced image noise. So to really use the system effectively, we have to control the noise. Like the uh, right image, so here, I get a hint of this damn high resolution, but noise buries the information of the high resolution. If we can develop some of the noise reduction techniques, there's a lot of uh, noise reduction papers out of their studies. If we can control the noise like the right image, mm -hmm. now we uh, see the high resolution without paying the penalty for the high uh, noise so that we can really see the synergy between the hardware and the software. And we also worked on some of AI denoising. So this is work from a, a former student, Nathan Huber, uh, who recently graduated. He developed mm -hmm. a AI-based, particularly CNN-based noise reduction that we can work with high resolution photon counting mm -hmm. uh, CT images. And you can demonstrate the benefit there. Um, in addition to, to that, we also want to extract the most information from the multi-energy perspective. So we worked on some CNN material decomposition algorithms and my colleague, Dr. Gong led the effort and uh, to uh, just want to show you one example, one particular application we look at is virtual non-calcium images. And this is a routine image, single energy. This is multi-energy, but with some conventional material decomposition method, we're starting seeing this lesion pan out, but I probably can see this in the single energy too. The problem with this is the noise and artifacts. So using this technique we call agate, we can uh, get more cleaner images. But more importantly, look at the lesions become more uh, clear there for the big one. The most important finding, however, are the small ones that was not visible before. Now they can turn out being visible using this uh, technology. We also try to push the envelope very uh, glad we saw the CTM this morning. So CT is not used a lot in breast imaging today. We tried it before, but I think technology back then was limited. So when we have the photon cutting, we say, let's give this another try. Particularly with the 125 micron resolution, we see we might have a shot to look at the macro calcification. And uh, in this, as we mentioned, we need to control the noise. So we work together with the denoising technique we call Garnet, AI-based technology developed by Nathan. And uh, 
this is the image we saw from a patient. As we can see, this calcification that we available, uh, that's visible on the mammogram, we can see them on CT too. So we are doing some ongoing investigation using photon counting detector CT in breast imaging. Um, so the benefits we have so far, you know, we can change the diagnosis, we can change the patient management. I think more importantly, I really love the story that this can change patient life. So this is work actually from uh, my colleague, AJ. Uh, so he's working on the CSF venous fistulas or CVFs. This is spinal CSF leak. Uh, leading to debilitating headaches. And he, he, he told me to emphasize that because this is not just, okay, I have a headache, I take a Tylenol. These are the headaches that affect the patient's life. They cannot work, they constantly the pain, they have trouble uh, during their daily activities. And this usually take a long time for diagnosis because the structure they see is teeny tiny, it's very hard to find them. And you really can take multi exams, could go through multiple institutes before they make a definite diagnosis. So AJ did the monogram using photon counting and particularly using the high resolution to see the smaller structure and also using the multi-energy to see the enhancement signal. Um, again, really here's dealing with a small size, small signal, very challenging task, but with the photon counting, he's been able to do this. And this particular patient, 18 months of uh, headaches, um, but. No, with no diagnosis. He did the myelogram, pin down exactly where the leakage is, and then the patient can go to a embolization and fix the problem and patient doing well, very quickly. I talked to him last Friday while preparing this talk. He said he already did 70 cases. And while I was there in the scanner room, the neuro, uh, neurologist actually came down and working with him. And he's like, many of these patients coming back to see me and said this, change their lives. Oh, so that's what I want to share with you. The last part I want to share with you is it has been an amazing journey. We're working on the phone county tech technology, but just as anything else, it takes a village. This is just some sample pictures. I have a, probably a, several thousand pictures. I cannot put into this uh, presentation. And then I talked to uh, uh, my colleague, Kevin, who's standing there. I say, okay, can we take a look at some statistics, what we have been working on? And this is something he helped me. This publication we have been doing the last few years, basically from 2018 to 2022, we published about 10 papers each year. And you see the number 20, uh, 2023, only not half year yet. We already have a lot of publications uh, because we're doing a lot of clinical uh, investigation nowadays. But we took a further look at this. I would say, let's take a look, you know, sorry. Let's take a look how many people have been working on this because that's where I think uh, another part of amazing journey is the team. So we look at our alumni, you know, our postdocs, fellows, students, uh, residents, our, um, you know, our technologists, our study coordinators, our service engineers, tremendous team there. And we try to look at where they're from, the all over the uh, world. And in addition to that, we look at, you know, what our collaborators inside the mail, we cover all the different departments. Uh, I think I saw some friends from orthopedics there. And uh, in addition to that, we also have collaborators with Siemens, our big partner, and we're also working with other universities. And uh, we did this symposium that we're reaching out, some of the picture I put there, reaching out to a large group of the community. So with that, just very quick summary. I think Fulton County Tech CT offers multiple benefits over conventional CT with the energy integrating detector. And we have seen tremendous benefit with many clinical applications. And I'm confident we'll see way more down the road in the, the next few years. And it's fascinating to stand here to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the first CT at Mayo. I think with the Fulton County, we are in a new era of CT. And with that, I want to acknowledge my colleagues and thank you for your attention.